a system whereby building never stops. The hold a meeting system. I remember one of the first meetings I ever held. It was two o'clock in the morning in a caboose at the back of a freight train going 55 miles per hour between Macon and Columbus. I had the extra board flag man on the job with me. We were sitting in the cupola or cupola of the caboose and I told him I wanted to draw out something that he would be very interested in. So he brought his lantern over and I had mine and we hooked them to under our arms and shone the beams on the top of a cardboard fuse box. Then I drew out plans for building a marketing business. That was my first meeting. The point behind this story is that to continually be building your business, you must be constantly holding meetings. A meeting is any place where two or more people are gathered. The one-on-one -on -one opportunity meeting. This is the most important type of meeting to hold. As in the previous example, you are only have to have one person as your audience. To build a super hierarchy, you should be having these types of meetings all the time. A minimum of four to five days or nights per week. The result of this initial meeting will be to get a commitment to come to your opportunity meeting at night. Who? Friends, neighbors, relatives, co-workers, social contact, business associates. What? Focus on your business opportunity, supplementing with graphics, sell the crusade by telling a story. Where? home, office, restaurant, work, anywhere where two or more are gathered. When? Breakfast time, mid-morning lunch time, afternoon, dinner time, evenings, any time and all the time, four to five days, nights per week. How? With enthusiasm and emotion. How to present a dynamic opportunity meeting. In the beginning of this book, I started that one of, I stated that one of your primary goals is building in building was to get more and more people, both old and new, to your opportunity meeting. I believe that the opportunity meeting concept lies at the very heart of a successful business. The more people you have at the meeting magically has a direct effect on the amount of sales produced by your base each month. Remember the formula, average number of people per week at opportunity meetings average number of base shop sales per month. It's no wonder that it's essential to have good meetings. The opportunity meeting is also designed to re-motivate your existing team. Remember that these people have already come to work and have been trained and stand ready as your natural resources. Don't ever count them out. The secondary purpose of the meeting is to sell the dream to new recruits. You always want to show bigness and stability in your presentation. Have a minimum of one meeting per week that lasts one to one and a half hours. That, that lasts one to one and a half hours. I think the best night is Tuesday. Large base shops will hold two meetings per week. Every Tuesday and Thursday night will provide the proper momentum. Preparation. This is critical to the success of your meeting and the most important part of your presentation is to make sure you have as many people as possible. I use an opportunity meeting projection sheet. Everyone in my base shop fills this sheet out every week. Administrative people call to confirm reservation and to encourage those old timers who have not signed up to come. Even if a rep hasn't been to a meeting in two months, he gets a phone call. When you call these people, make them feel good, even if they've been missing an action for a while. Let them know that you're counting on them to be there to help with the new people. Always do a projection sheet. If you don't prepare to have a good meeting, you won't. Plan to hold your meeting at your office or meeting room. In the first half of my meetings, I require slide support equipment. And in the second half of the meeting, I use a grease board to show marketing plans. All meetings should start promptly at 7.30 p.m. and conclude no matter then, no later than 8.45 p.m., an hour and 15 minutes max, regardless of who or how many in attendance. Before the meeting, all new people should have been advised that our business opportunity will be highlighted. Number two, preferably have 
been driven to the meeting site by the ALW inviter. Everyone, both old and new people, should. Number one, bring their spouse, if at all possible. Number two, have been exposed to good, strong leaders with a positive winning attitude at all times. Number three, be registered in the attendance book for future records by their A.L. Williams friend and given a name tag highlighted their first name in bold print. Number four, be properly introduced to the speaker for that night so that a warm rapport can immediately be established. Number five, be made to feel at ease and properly seated in the opportunity meeting area. The magic of crowds. Your entire presentation should be dynamic and powerful. It should be conducted by the most enthusiastic and dynamic do-it-first leader on the team. Preferably two leaders share speaking on pre-assigned portions of agenda to provide balance. If you don't have the most super duper speaker in the world, don't let that stop you. You can still have a great meeting. There is great synergy at work in groups. I call the magic of crowds. A large number of people creates a sense of urgency to get in and get going. People are more relaxed because they sense that you aren't going to bug them or beg them. Everyone involved is excited and enthusiastic. This is contagious. A business friend of mine visited a friend of his recently. This guy has a booming business and people always go to see the guys who are hot. So he goes to see all this magic that is happening in his friend's business. When he finishes, the first guy says, I give a better meeting than you. Why are you doing so much better? The second guy says, I never claimed to give a great presentation. The only difference between me and you is that I've got 30 people listening to me and you've got 30. The success of, I mean, 300 people listen to me and you've got 30. The success of an opportunity meeting is determined by the number of people in attendance. I believe it's really impossible to get a bad presentation if your message is great. So stop worrying about your delivery and go for it. The presentation. During the presentation, your speaker will portray the following. No pressure, even a little laid back. Sincerity and conviction. Stability of the, of the company. Crusade work. No something for nothing here. Unlimited opportunity and challenges, freedom with responsibility, believability. They must see themselves winning. No hype is needed in your presentation. The facts are already good enough. Let this goodness show. Don't oversell. The infectious enthusiasm of the ALW friend is the key element in the new, in the new person. Not the size of the office, the eloquence of the speaker, nor the impressive slides videos, posters, etc. Suggested Opportunity Meeting Agenda Welcome guests introduction of first speaker first impressions are the most important. Get guests to dream, ponder goals, prime pump by relating your reason for going into business. Point out reasons that most Americans have a feeling of hopelessness such as inflation, job ceiling, lack of experience, lack of capital, and or fear of job security risks that prevent them from being in business for themselves. Describe how your business allows you to be your own boss with a business of your own. You start part-time, usually with less than $100, regardless of your experience level, if you're ambitious and honest. Tell how you started. Give good crusade-oriented presentation related. Flash of cash value life insurance, funny banking rules, buy term and invested difference concept, asset management concept, brief, the decreasing responsibility theory, how to increase your net worth presentation, why mutual funds, why we're controversial, why we are right. If they don't like a good fight, maybe they should reconsider. Show tremendous market potential and need for financial product services. Show big picture, but focus in on how to get started and earn realistic extra income part-time. Share your local success and your upline success stories, constantly reminding the guests that if you can do it, they can do it. Wrap up presentation by reviewing key points. To offer people a chance to do something special with their lives. To offer an alternative choice, buy term and invest the difference. Challenge the guests in this manner. If they're interested in hearing more they're asked to stay for brief orientation at conclusion. If they're not interested, they may leave. Thank them for coming and encourage their doing business with you if they aren't already. 
They'll never know for sure if they can do this unless they try. The challenge at the end of the meeting is very important. You want them to see that if they really want to get ahead in life, they have to keep an open mind about opportunities. Study everything as if this was the one. I tried many different career paths before I found the right one. If I hadn't kept my trying machine going, I wouldn't have made it. Stress to, to them that they ought to at least try. After the presentation, one of the most important parts of the whole evening will take place after, you, after your presentation. It's critical that you do not just let people slip away without trying to get their reaction or talking to them about the next step. Each new person should be linked back up to the ALW friend immediately at the end of the presentation and introduced to the person who is in charge of training. This is the beginning of the follow-up system. Think positive. Always assume that a person will take the next step unless he or she shows something different by their hesitation or procrastination. In my follow-up system, I designate an office or room for the meeting after the meeting with new guests. Here I give them an appointment book and a decision pack. Material take home with them. This meeting should be brief, no more than 10 to 15 minutes. Everything should be over, the, over by 9 o'clock p.m. to allow guests to get home on time, to socialize with the most interested guests, to sign up to the red hot ones, or possibly because you need to rush off to a 9.15 home appointment. Collapse time frame. Monitor the numbers. You must learn to monitor your pre, your actual, and your post numbers at the opportunity meeting. I can't stress this enough. If you don't have a list of names and addresses of the people who came to the meeting and who invited them, then you're missing an opportunity to follow up later. The Humphrey Management Factory. The Management Factory is designed to help you solve one primary problem that tempts you as you build your super hierarchy. The human tendency to quit. I am talking about your tendency to quit building because you think you have it made. For example, let's say I've hired Joe Studd. And I just know he's going to come to the opportunity meeting. I'm just certain that Joe's going to be a superstar. He's going to build a great organization. So I quit talking to other people because I just know that Joe is going to come through. But Joe may not work out immediately. He may say he'll get back to me later. That's the killer. You can't stop building while waiting for a particular person to come through. You have to expect people to come in but act as if none will. How the factory works. I spent more than 15 years of my life as a railroad conductor. Day after day, I was involved in the operations of the trains whose primary purpose was to transport raw materials to manufacturing plants in various locations across South Georgia. Years later, when I went into business for myself, I noticed a striking similarity between what I was doing and what I had been doing part of the, of the day after day on the railroad. I began to compare material potential new people to raw material, and my office to a manufacturing site. Here's how the analogy breaks down. Plant, raw material, management factory, potential new hires. Plant, delivery transport system, management factory, new people, and leaders selling the dream. Plant, processing site, management factory, opportunity meeting. Plant, screening filter system, follow up. Plant, finishing line, management factory, startup. Plant, value production, the new people building more new people. New people are the raw material. The object is to get the raw material to the plant processing site or, in our case, the opportunity meeting. Each builder is designated as a delivery vehicle. He or she is a transportation supplying the factory with raw material. Look at the diagram on the previous page. The builder approaches the raw material supply, which are the prospects. He brings a prospect to the plant site, the opportunity meeting. The delivery vehicle runs several times a week from the raw material supply to the plant processing site. This way, the pipeline stays filled with new potential people. Once at the opportunity meeting, the new prospect moves farther into the factory system. He learns more about the company, what he does for the consumer, and what he can do for him. As a business opportunity, meanwhile, the builder, after he has dropped off his raw material at the plant, goes to a refueling station or a training class. After the opportunity meeting and the training classes are over, 
The builder joins up with his prospect. The builder then escorts the prospect to his manager, where he begins what I call the eight filter follow up. The follow up is a series of steps that the new prospect takes to tell you just how committed he really is. If he makes it through all eight filters, then he becomes part of the management factory. This pattern continues for at least four training classes. Meanwhile, the new person studies state required education material and possibility. By the time he gets his license, he's ready to get started building his own business. Eight filters. The follow-up system provides a means of testing the interest level of the new person. Each filter or step requires an additional commitment from the person. You should read his reactions carefully. They tell you how serious the person really is. Desire is the main ingredient to look for. To start the follow-up, the builder must leave his training class in time to join up with the new person immediately following the opportunity meeting. Filter 1. Stay after the meeting. This step is simply a challenge to the prospect to remain after work for a brief orientation. The keynote speaker ends his meeting by requesting that those who are interested should stay after the meeting. He also thanks those who are not interested and he asks them to leave. Filter 2. Take home information. Each new person should take home some type of information packet, something of value that will provide him with an increased knowledge and awareness of the opportunity, opportunity you're offering him. The manager is expected to point out which materials will work best for that particular person. The idea here is that the person must take home something of value no matter what. Filter 3. Schedule follow-up interview. If the prospect commits to a defined time within the next 24 to 48 hours to meet with the leader for the follow-up interview, then you know he or she is probably very interested. It's during this interview that he submits hiring papers. Set up this appointment the night of the opportunity meeting and try to arrange to have it at the office. I've seen too many people run all over the country trying to get hiring papers back and the person is conveniently not at home. There is no way of knowing whether the extra trouble that you go to for one person will be worth it. Set up a daytime appointment, which will increase the prospect level of commitment. Filter 4. Prospects submit hiring papers. This, this is the ultimate indication of commitment. If the potential new person fills out the hiring papers, you can feel sure he or she has serious interest. Filter 5. Qualify leaders. Sign letters. If a prospect is truly interested, he will sit down with you and fully qualify his leaders. Sign and referral letters. Let us send to prospects advising them of the opportunity. A really committed recruit will sign 20 letters of referral. When you are qualified, a person leads you. When you are qualifying a person leads, person's leads, you should decide whether or not you need to, number one, go by, number two, call the person by phone. Never treat him as if you're some greedy person trying to get names from him. Ultimately, the names will be helping to build his business. I talked to him about how great the possibilities are because of all the people he knows. If you keep jogging someone's memory, he can come with all kinds of names. Work towards getting as many as 100 referrals from a new person as critical, are critical to his survival in the business. One of the biggest reasons for lack of activity in your business is that people are wasting too much valuable time on new people who have procrastinating tendencies. A new person should personalize these letters with a written PS. He could write something like, I'm going to try to drop by with my friend if at all possible. You really want to take a look at this. These letters are mailed directly to the new prospect, even though the new person cannot anticipate in a sale until he gets his license. You should always try to take him with you to observe. Filter 6. Determine immediate goal. You know a new person is committed when he tells you exactly what he wants to accomplish. You must find out why he is signing on, what he sees himself doing, and when he plans to attain his goal. Filter 7. Fast Start. If a prospect will immediately go out with you to the home of his three best prospects, you may have found a superstar. Filter 8. Client. Most new people who need our product and qualify for it will buy it. This shows that they truly believe in the value of the product and they are sincere in selling it. Review your results. It makes sense to hold a weekly manager's meeting to review the past week's program and plan for upcoming weeks, considering the following. How many prospects came from each team? How did the speaking at the opportunity meeting 
and the instructions instructors in the training class do? Was the space adequate? Did everyone go through a follow-up? How many uh, submitted hiring papers? How many sets of policies data were picked up? How many referral letters were signed? Which managers participated? That's just to get you started. The important thing to remember is to always be trying to improve your system. Set a goal of developing a very mobile and building oriented team of managers. This team should quickly build through their new reps. They hold the key to the team's success in this system by keeping a constant flow of prospects coming through.